Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm going to watercolor a set of guinea pig cards. I bet you never thought that there was going to be a set of any guinea pig cards to be made because how much need might there be? Well, you might have friends who like guinea pigs or you might just like cute things. And Art Impressions has both. They came out with these a few months ago and I had to get them because they were adorable. And yeah, really, really cute. I'm going to mix up a couple of different browns for my different guinea pigs on these cards and using some quinacridone gold, quinacridone burnt orange, and a little sepia. And you can mix up your own browns out of a bunch of different colors as well. There is no science to saying you need this much of that and this many dabs of whatever. It's just a matter of playing around with it to get it to where you want it to be. And if you, like me, don't end up with mixing enough paint for a particular area, then you get to learn how to mix on the paper because I love mixing on the paper. I love adding a little bit extra brown here and a little bit of extra yellow there. And it adds some difference in the color as well as some shading and stuff. But you just need to be careful that you do it in such a way that your colors are still going to blend and you're still going to end up not getting big bloops of, of uh, blooms and that kind of thing or cauliflowers. <laughs> In uh, Europe, they call them cauliflowers, or at least in some places where I've taken classes from teachers from Europe, and they, they call it cauliflower instead, which I think works. But here I'm just playing around with painting in more colors and letting those flow into everything else and letting them blend. And you can see it obviously dried, which was one of the first times in a while, I think, on a video that I let my watercolor dry so that things didn't mush and bleed <laughs> into each other. You're probably proud of me. You should give me a thumbs up for being a good girl and not having things bleed all over the place. So there you go. Got my little pellets painted. Isn't that sentiment hilarious? Hello from the pellet factory. If you've ever had a guinea pig, you probably know it is a pellet factory. They need to make one for dogs that like it's a dog poop factory, except dog poop is not as funny as like pellet is in a sentiment. <laughs> Because, yeah, my backyard would be a factory of its very own if we had a special name for for that. But pellets are pretty cute, and I, I think the sentiment is hilarious. The stuff that runs through Bonnie's mind over at Art Impressions blows my mind. Just the fact that she comes up with some of these ideas is pretty amazing. She's one talented and funny, funny person. So I'm just adding some really simple green to the bottom so that I have a punch of color without adding a full scene. I didn't want to get into that today. It doesn't feel like it. So make it just really simple for yourself. Next up is the flying guinea pig, which is hilarious. I love little flying animals. I did a recent video on their flying cards where the little wings would fly for the different animals, which is funny too. So you'll have to look that one up. Maybe I'll see if I remember to link it at the end of this video. But they are really cute. Flutter cards is what they're called. They're stamps and dies together that will make the wings fly. But I'm going to show you how to make the wings fly when you're just doing a two-dimensional card because I'm going to make it look like our guinea pig is flying through the air and his little wings are moving. There's a few lines on there for motion, but um, I'm going to do a little bit more than that. But I'm going to add a little bit of dimension to him first, add different browns in the shaded areas and to give him a little bit of that, that look that he's dimensional in space. And notice that I'm just kind of randomly mixing my browns. I went a little bit too heavy there, so I'm gonna to try to pull some of that color in after rinsing my brush to get some of that extra brown out of there. Because I wanted to have a little definition between his face and his ear and let his little hand pop out, that sort of thing. So sometimes it takes a little working to get the animal to look the way you want it to. But I was kind of trying to mimic a little bit of that darkness by adding a little extra dark in some of the shadows on his body too. Because that really made his head pop forward to put that shadow behind. And now I'm going to use a little light bit of that same kind of a mixture, that yellowish color, with a lot of that quinacridone gold. And make a couple lines around the back side of him. and Because that's the direction he's coming from. And then use a, an almost completely dry brush with just a little bit of clean water on it to lighten out and soften the outside one. 
and then I took a little bit of the darker brown to throw in a few areas. So now he's going to have a little bit extra to make him look like he's flying. Now since I have all that brown, I'm going to make a little sign down here. I've done this before in videos. And I stamped my sentiment deliberately crooked because then I could not have to worry about making it straight. But I'm going to make a sign that's going to fit the, the actual stamp, the sentiment. And you can do this kind of a thing without drawing the sign in first. Paint it in because you can adjust the outside edges. You can see if you can make it straight. Do you need to change it up a little bit? If you draw those lines in a pen, you're kind of stuck with it. So that's why I like to draw mine later on. So I will add pen lines after it's all completely dry. But for this one, I'm going to add some ground, but I'm just going to make a little oval shape, kind of a little hillside. So our guinea pig has somewhere to land in the guinea pig airfield that we have created here. With this little guinea bee, a great day. So go use that pun on somebody. <laughs> I'm sure your friends and family will love that as a pun shared with them. And last but not least, I'm going to do these other two little guinea pigs. And they are having a party and they are pigging out on some cake, which is something that is near and dear to my heart. I would love to be sitting there with guinea pigs and munching into a giant piece of cake. I've been trying to get rid of the, the winter pudge a little bit. It's been a long winter of eating more than I should, and as summer, spring and summer are coming, I can't sit there like them and eat a giant cake. But I'm going to enjoy it vicariously through them. And I'm going to let them be the ones to put on all the extra weight from the cake. But the, uh, they're just so cute. They're happy little, little guys. They're smiling so big that one on the left is just grinning ear to ear. And they have bites taken out of the cake and everything. They're just really cute. And I know that uh, Bonnie, as the, the one who designs, who draws and designs all their stamps and all their dyes and everything, she is an amazing talent. If you ever have an idea for a stamp set, like some crazy animal pun or something, just email Art Impressions with it. Because I'm telling you, if she takes on to the idea, she will make a stamp out of pretty much anything. Because, like, she made silly guinea pig stamps. Of course. She's like really talented and she can make them all look really cute too because their animal animal stamps are always really fun they're full of character they just have a lot going on in them so this one is my little black guinea pig and I was trying to decide how much of his body I was going to make black did I want to leave him with the stripes but there's so much of the cake and everything in front I decided to just fill all that in and let the whole body behind the cake be dark because I just, it was getting to be too fussy. And sometimes when you get an image that has this much going on in it, it can be a little hard to tell the difference between where one thing starts and the other stops. And sometimes just using a solid color where you would normally maybe leave that stripe of white going through will help to clarify the image just a little bit and make it a little bit, a little bit stronger. So let that dry and then I come back to it and finish off the rest of the image. See, look at me. I get another gold star for waiting and not bleeding all my color one into another, right? I was very proud of myself that I was thinking through this a little bit better than I sometimes do. So here I'm just gonna paint in all of the other pieces on this. I decided it's all gonna be chocolate cake and chocolate cupcakes. Even though I was considering making different flavors I knew the cake all had to be one. Maybe the cupcakes be, could be something else. But no, I'm going to let it all be chocolate because that is my favorite. And given that uh, I have a birthday around this time frame, I don't know exactly what day this video is posting, but my birthday is in the end of March. I'm going to make cake that I would like to eat for my birthday. <laughs> so there you go. And I decided to use just two little colors or maybe three colors in this to add a little bit of that birthday celebration kind of thing to it. So I did a little quinacridone pink and then jumped over to some gamboge for some yellow highlights on things because I wanted to do the same green on the ground that they're sitting on to match the other two. So it's a set of cards, even though I don't know why it needs to be a set, but you know, makes a nice pretty picture when they all match pretty. And so I'm gonna use the yellow and the pink kind of taking turns between them 
for the cake and the frosting and all the little different parts. Um, adding a little bit of the green elsewhere in the picture, but leave, leaving most of the green down there on the bottom and letting the yellow and the pink carry through. You could use, you know, a dozen colors up there in the top, but it just seemed to be overkill to do that when you've got a really complex image limiting the color palette can often really help to clean things up a little bit and make it a little bit, I don't know, easier to view and figure out where one thing starts and another stops. That's another reason why I opted on this one not to put any gray shadows like I'd done on some of the other ones. I didn't put any gray shadows in these because it's just going to be too complex if I were to do that. And complex is often not the best thing to, uh, to amplify. So your coloring can simplify a very complex stamp and it can also take a really simple stamp and make it complex. So on simpler stamps, you have a little more space, a little more ability to add more to it and to get crazier with your colors and with your textures and your patterns and your scenes and things. So on this green background, it did not do so well in getting things smooth, but you know, the rest of it is going to be fun enough that I decided I'm just going to leave it because I can't continue to work on it forever. I could only go so far with trying to fix it. So I knew I was going to cut off that outside edge. So I thought even though I've got too much dark pigment on that left side, I'm just going to let it go and I'll let the dye cut off that outside a little bit. For my sentiment, again, I had stamped it crooked so that I could make a balloon out of it and then paint my balloon in whatever color that I was going to paint it and then add my lines afterward so that that would then be able to to determine what the shape of the balloon was going to be. So there's my finished cards. Isn't that a cute set of cards? I think they're adorable. They're so much fun. I'm going to have a lot of fun coloring these in different mediums and stuff. So watch my Instagram and you might see some more of these colored in the coming days um, since uh, around the time that this video is going up. Alrighty, I will see you guys later. Have a really awesome day. Go make a card for somebody that's going to just make them smile.